for anyone, especially people who are who find themselves saying yes to too many things and then just no time for themselves, no time to pursue their dreams, pursue their interests, their hobbies, etc. This is a must read. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Meaningful Conversations podcast. Today's topic is all about books. I want to share 10 different life-changing books that I have read or, you know, some of them, one of them actually, I still need to read. I've only read summaries of it, but it is also life-changing and I wanted to share them with you so that you can add them to your list because honestly, I think the best way to widen your horizon, to change the way you think, etc. To change your life, essentially, is through reading. Every time I reread a book, and especially one of these books, it just brings me new thoughts, it just creates new connections, and it's every time I get something new and super valuable out of it. So I want to share some of the books that I am and will be going back to over and over again because they have been absolutely life-changing so far. So let's start with the one that I actually haven't read and that is Atomic Habits. I have heard so much about that book and I have read summaries of it and I honestly understand what it's all about so I guess that's why it's taken me so long to read it because I, I very much understand what the topic is going to be. However, I know that until I read it, I'm not going to create those connections that I've been just talking about with you. The book is all about creating systems in your life, creating habits that build on top of each other, that create an environment that optimize your life because goals are great. However, systems are the systems, the, you know, the little mechanisms that will take you there, that will take you to your goal completion, to your the next level, to those achievements, etc. So Atomic Habits is one of those books that I know everybody needs to read and reread and reread and reread because every time you will get something new and something fresh out of it. Let me know in the comments if you have read this book and what you think about it. I know a lot of you have read it already, so I'm super excited to hear your thoughts whether you've revisited it again, and what you got out of it every single time you read it. The next book, and now we're entering the world of the books that I have read. I've started Atomic Habits. I haven't read it yet. The next book is Winning the Brain Game. I love learning more about our brain and how it works and understanding, you know, separating the, I want to say the animal from the rational if that makes sense, separating the instincts from things that we can think through and like being in control of our instincts. So this book talks about the seven flaws of our brain and it talks about how to overcome them. It gives you different um, exercises that I have found absolutely groundbreaking, life-changing, and I implement them almost every single day. One of them is called Framestorming. I talked about it, I believe, in episode, oh, I don't remember, episode four. Um, It's a great tool to idea generate, to generate ideas, to ideate, to brainstorm, um, to problem solve, etc. And it has other incredible tools that helps us overcome some of those flaws in our thinking systems because as I said, we are, you know, we are wired. We have certain instincts. And if we're thoughtful about the process, we can overcome them. And, you know, creating habits and creating our environment is one thing. The other thing is having the tools to actually do that. So winning the brain game, incredible book. You should definitely read it in 2022. The next book, and it's the book that I'm going to be rereading next. And it's called The Coaching Habit. It's all about becoming a better coach. And it talks about how everybody should be a coach, whether you're a leader or you're a peer, etc. Being a coach is just, and what do I mean by being a coach? Someone who helps someone else develop and does that in particular by asking better questions, by asking more questions and shutting up and letting the person figure it out for themselves. It's, you know, kind of like, give a man a fish, he will be 
walk full for a day and then teach a man how to fish. And I don't remember how it, you know, it ends on a good note. Essentially, you are giving this person a tool on how to discover themselves, on how to provide for themselves, that kind of knowledge, questions, questioning yourself and understanding what's going on inside of you is one of those kinds of tools. So the coaching habit is all about how to overcome your instinct of trying to give advice, take a step back and ask questions because that is more powerful than giving your own advice. Yes, your advice is great. Don't get me wrong. But what this person in this moment really needs is probably a great question that they can answer for themselves, given the context, given their situation that we sometimes don't fully understand because we're not them, right? So The Coaching Habit is a great book for that. That's one of the skills I'm really trying to uh, learn and I want to reread this book once again. I highly recommend for anyone, whether you are in leader in a leadership position, whether you're not, developing other humans around us and developing ourselves, you know, when we build that skill of asking better questions that helps us develop ourselves better too. So wonderful book. Book number four is How to Talk to Anyone. And it's a very practical book that is pretty fast paced. And I was listening, I'm listening to most of these books, right? And I was listening to it and I got almost overwhelmed. I had to pause it, process some of the techniques, and then go back to it for more. But it's incredibly actionable and it is aimed at anyone, especially I would say someone as introverted as myself or, you know, even extroverts, I'm sure could benefit from it. It basically talks about some of the psychology of human interaction and how can you position yourself to have a presence that inspires others to talk to you. And it gives you some of the tips and some of the little tricks that you can employ that will help you network with other people. For example, the the author says, uh, wear your what's it. So what's it is an item that is so different. It could be a brooch. It could be, I don't know, a jacket. It could be something. It could be earrings that helps people start a conversation with you. What is it? You know, that's your what's it. Like a person comes up to you and they're like, what's that? Or, you know, some type of item that helps start a conversation, which I've never thought about. Like, it's, it was groundbreaking to me. Like, wear your watset and being strategic about wearing a watset. It's not just part of your style. It's actually helping you. Your clothing or your um, accessories are actually helping you network and start conversations. <sighs> Crazy. So, yeah, that book is incredible. How to Talk to Anyone. It is very practical. So it will take you probably some time to be able to implement all of those strategies. But you know, little by little, you can get through it. The next book is Essentialism. I read it in 2020 and it has really changed my life and changed my approach to the projects that I take on. I used to, and you know, I still have the tendency of trying to take on as much as possible. However, reading that book helped me understand what is more important and have my priorities straightened up in order to, you know, make room, make space for me and things that are important to me and not overstretch myself over projects that don't necessarily serve their purpose in my life. Incredibly purposeful, incredibly insightful book. So I highly recommend reading that one as well. Essentialism for anyone, especially people who are who find themselves saying yes to too many things and then just no time for themselves, no time to pursue their dreams, pursue their interests, their hobbies, etc. This is a must read for everyone, but especially for those who are having a hard time to find time for things. Essentialism, read it. And actually on that note, Essentialism was the second book on the topic that I've read. Previously, I have read Free to Focus, which is also an awesome book. I, I'm not including it into this um, overarching list, but it's also a bonus book, which is very actionable on how you can filter out the things in your life and in your business or in your work, whatever you're doing, filter out those things and either automate them, delegate them, eliminate them, 
or make them fun, essentially. So that's another book that I would recommend on the topic if ma making time for things is different or if you just feel that you are just overstretched. And just like that, we're on to book number six, which is my absolute favorite, Mindset. I talk about this book all the time, so you've definitely heard me talk about it. So if you have heard me talk about it yet and you haven't read it yet, this is the year to do it. It is your sign that it is time to read this incredible book. Mindset is all about, you know, the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. And the author, Dr. Carol Dweck, is the person who started off this concept of growth mindset. She is a psychologist and a researcher herself, a lecturer. Her students asked her to re write that book because they have found it incredibly useful. And yes, you might be familiar with what growth mindset versus fixed mindset is, which if you are not familiar, you have to read this book. Like it's going to change your life. And if you are familiar with what it is, still, you got to read this book because I was familiar. I thought I had a growth mindset before reading that book. But let me tell you, once I read that book, I realized how nuanced that is and how certain part in certain parts of my life, I have a growth mindset and how I have a fixed mindset in others. And it just gives you the tools to move away from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. It gives you examples of leaders, athletes, etc., and how one or another growth mindset or fixed mindset has either served them or not. And so it's just, it's just incredibly insightful and helpful. And um, yeah, my mom read that book and she was over the moon with some of the insights that she's had about herself and learning English right now, etc. It's just been, it's a wonderful book. You got to read it. Honestly, you got to read it. If you have not read it, make sure it's on your list for 2022. I keep on trying to say 2020. It's it's crazy. I've, I've had some real Freudian slips where I would say, oh yeah, happy 2020. Realizing that's two years later. Anyway, the next book I want to talk about, I just recently finished it um, and it's called Bringing Up the Boss. It is very insightful, very helpful for anyone who wants to be a good manager or a good leader. Not only is it helpful for those who are in managerial positions, but those who want to be uh, in man managerial positions in the future or just you know, as an individual contributor to understand that landscape better, which I think is very important because in order to either race through the ranks or know how to, I don't want to say work the system, but you know what I mean, right? Like understand how the system works and how you fit in and what you need to do in order to, you know, position yourself and make sure that your interests are addressed, all of those things, you got to understand how the system works. And so that's a very, very useful book for anyone. This book will teach you all about feedback, all about performance, reviews, etc., and how to manage people below you, how to manage your peers, how to manage people above you, right? Manage up. Managing up is such a huge skill. How do we learn that? By managing up ourselves or reading materials on the topic. And I feel like this book is a very great resource for that. And one of the things that I won't forget from this book is, uh, and I don't remember the exact quote, but basically when it comes to vulnerability and confidence, show vulnerability down and show confidence up. And that is how you manage up. And that is how you are a good leader, how you will be a good leader to your team by showing vulnerability, but the right amount of vulnerability, of course, because you also still want to be seen as a leader. It's a balance, right? And this book teaches you that balance. It's really interesting. So bringing up the boss, highly recommended for your list in 2022. Make sure that you read it. Wonderful book. Oh, the next book, I will teach you to be rich. Rich. I will teach you to be rich. Yeah, I managed to say it. I don't know why I'm having issues with the word rich. Reach? Rich? Non-native person problems. However, I Will Teach You To Be Rich is an incredible, life-changing book as well. I honestly thought whenever I heard about that book, I honestly thought it was going to be another one of those boring budget books about how to manage your finances. No, it is 
the opposite of that. It teaches you, you know, the basics of how one's personal finances should be allocated, including some of the fun stuff that you actually want to be spending money on. It helps you be more intentional about spending your money, about earning your money, and about how you invest your money. And it's it's absolutely incredible. I love it. And I would recommend it to anyone, even even if you are investing already, even if you have a retirement account. And if you don't, oh my God, you have to read it. Like do it immediately. It's going to change your life and the way you approach to money. And the earlier you do that, the more compound interest you're going to earn. So just do it right now. Like literally, once you're done with this video, go and get that book. I will teach you to be rich. All of the links will be in the description. So just go ahead and get it. You will see it's like, it's going to be life-changing for sure. The next book is by another psychologist and it's called Unbleep Your Boundaries. I don't know how I stumbled upon it. I think I was doing research on boundaries and how to communicate them, how to define them for yourself and how to communicate them and, you know, being more proactive and intentional about that process. And I came across this book, which I think is an Audible original. So you might get it for free if you have an Audible subscription. So double check before getting that book if you do have an Audible account. However, it has been incredibly life-changing, not just from the perspective of understanding my own boundaries and understanding the different types of boundaries and how to communicate them, but also respecting other people's boundaries because it's easy and it's, you know, it's, I guess that's step number one in the process, identifying your own boundaries, right? It's easier to do that. However, understanding other people's boundaries and how you may have crossed them before and trying to respect them going forward, that is something that we don't necessarily see as much in the media in, at least it's not as loud, you know, because me, me, me is always louder than, but let's think about other people too. So this book makes sure that you think about that as well. But of course, it's incredibly helpful in your own self-discovery of boundaries. It presents this structure to boundaries that I've never seen before, um, you know, from rigid boundaries to uh, flexible boundaries to, you know, non-existent boundaries and like understanding what categories of boundaries you can have, um, you know, from intellectual to physical to property boundaries. There's so many different categories. So I highly recommend reading the book unbleep your boundaries or listening to it because the author is well the, the the voice I don't think it's the author reading the um the book in audible at least this one in particular however it's it's pretty humorous so you will definitely enjoy it and that brings us to our final book book number 10 which is the power of a positive no boundaries was quite a nice introduction into the topic of um, saying no and communicating your boundaries. So this book will take you a step further and help you communicate that in a positive way. So the power of a positive no is all about protecting your boundaries, protecting that something that's important to you that you know, you probably w would have identified in the book called Essentialism that we talked about already. You know, it all kind of ties up together, in my opinion. The Power of a Positive No gives you a structure on how to say no in a positive way while respecting the other per person and furthering re the relationship without creating a conflict, starting a, a, a conflict or, you know, hurting their feelings, because it's not about them in this case. It's about you protecting something that's important to you. So this book is an incredible manual on how to do that. So there you have it. Those are the 10 books that I think everybody should add to their list in 2022. 2022 Jesus Christ and read them in 2022. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books before? What are the life-changing books you would like me to add to this list? Because I know everybody has their own and books are incredible. So let's share the love for books. All of the links to the books that I have mentioned today are in the description. So go ahead and check them out. Just a little disclaimer, the links are affiliate because I 
you know, believe these books. And I think that they're incredible. And I would be very grateful for you to purchase those books if you are going to purchase them through those links. Basically, the way it works, if you're not familiar with the affiliate links, it doesn't cost anything extra to you. However, every time you buy through a link, uh, that I have pr provided, it basically Amazon will give me a little commission. Um, so they will use some of their margins and pay me a commission. It doesn't cost anything to you. However, it supports this channel. So um, yeah, thank you for doing that. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I appreciate you joining us and let's continue this conversation on our newsletter and in social media. You can find us as Stereotype Breakers. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on the podcasting platform of choice, of your choice, Meaningful Conversations podcast and YouTube channel, our YouTube channel where this podcast gets published as a video podcast. Make sure you're subscribed over there as well because we have new episodes coming out to you every single week. Right now, we publish on Wednesdays. We'll see if this changes uh, later on, but I will let you know when, when it does. Have a wonderful time of the day. You're currently experiencing, friends. Bye.